Amen. If you have 2 Corinthians, say amen. Chapter 4, say amen. Verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I want to talk tonight about I refuse to give up. On your way to your seat, smile. Let somebody like you're getting ready to take a picture and tell them I refuse to give up. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, are in fact the testimony of a Christian who refuses to give up in spite of what he's dealing with. Can I say to you that those of us who are saved and those of us who have decided to serve God, the truth of the matter is, y'all, you can quit whenever you get ready. Those of you who work in the church, the truth of the matter is, ain't nobody holding a gun to your head, making you do what you do for the Lord. But the testimony is, most of us in here have refused to quit in spite of the pain and problems of life. When you read this text, Paul is speaking from experience. You see, one of the problems with the body of Christ, Pastor Michael Pry, is that we testify from a hypothetical situation. We, we talk about how good God is because all is well. But the text says tonight, it makes a difference when the water is in your boat. It's easy to shout when the water is in somebody else's boat. But it makes a difference when the water is in your boat. Now here's what I want you to get about the lesson tonight. The whole idea of the text is what we are in don't have to be in us. Okay, here it is. You missed it. Peace doesn't mean I won't have problems. Peace means my problems won't have me. And the shout of the text is God can deliver you in a situation way before he delivers you out of a situation. In other words, you can be in some and you're not jumping off a bridge. You can be having a problem and you ain't overdosing. You can be going through something and you don't go back and pick up the bottle because you've got peace in the midst of your trouble. Now the, now the question tonight is, what kind of but do you have? See, we only use the word but in the negative sense. We use but when we want to throw cold water on somebody else's situation. But we need to turn the but around. Here was what I mean. He says we are troubled but... We are not distressed. Y'all not helping me. We, we are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but we are not destroyed. If I was at my church, I would ask somebody to hold my mic because the shout is bad news won't make me change my mind. 
I need seven folk in here who've had bad news this week or this month or this year, but you were at revival on a stormy Monday night Memorial Day because bad news won't make you change your mind. The truth, I'm to the text, the truth of your testimony is tested in trouble. If you, if you got a real testimony, it came from a test. And so the lesson tonight, here is the revelation tonight. The side of the conjunction you choose to live on shows how strong your faith is. Some of you live on the left side, you're troubled. Some of us on the right side, we ain't distressed. Y'all not feeling me. Some of us live on the left side. We've been persecuted. But some of us on the right side, we ain't forsaken. Some of us on the left side, we've been cast down. But some of us on the right side, we are not destroyed. So here's what this lesson teaches. Four things, four short things, I promise you. And I'm out of here and you can go get your dessert. Here's what Paul is saying. You see, he's saying we are troubled. Everybody say troubled. But not in distress. Here's what he's saying. He's saying when you live on the right side of the butt, you'll have peace in spite of pressure. Somebody shout pressure. Here's what he says. He, he says, if you are a child of God, you're going to have to have some trouble. Trouble ain't nothing new. Uh, Pastor George, to the people of God, I mean, the Hebrew boys had a fiery furnace. Daniel had a lion's den. Joseph had a prison. David ran from Saul. Paul and Silas was in jail. John was on the Isle of and Jesus had a cross but the shout is God is a deliverer anybody here know God he is a deliverer when Paul writes this it looks like he's living under Murphy's law that whatever bad could happen it did happen Okay, some of you don't know the text. He's been in prison several times. He's received stripes from the Jews. Three times he's beaten with rods, shipwrecked three times. He was even stoned and left for dead. But I'm able to preach from this text tonight because he never gave up. Now watch what trouble means uh, on every side. Watch this. Trouble means I'm in a tight spot. On every side means if it ain't one thing, it's another. And about three folk in here will tell you sometimes it's both. But watch this. Here is the shout. I'm troubled but not distressed. Here's the shout. It means I'm cramped but I'm not crushed. It means even though I'm in a tight place, God left me a little room. But what you don't understand is the room is not for you to run, it's for you to rejoice. I wish I had somebody in here who know that though I'm in a tight place, I've got to yet praise. I'm going to praise God anyhow. I can't see my way. I can't turn to the left or the right, but hallelujah. Oh, suck it. Anyhow. You see, you see, we allow our faith, watch this, allow your faith to determine your reaction, not your reality. Y'all not feeling me tonight. Here's what I'm trying to say. Facts don't have to control your faith. The fact is you're laid off, but faith says God will make a way. The fact is I'm sick, but my faith says God is a healer. The fact is I've lost a loved one, but my faith says it ain't no burden. God cannot lift trouble. 
somebody shout trouble trouble is the factory God is using to manufacture the right product in your life see what y'all don't know about trouble is trouble drives you to places prosperity can't get you because when all is going well you get amnesia but when you get to going through stuff you'll show up at church on memorial day and if nobody else praises him you will praise him all by yourself touch two people tell them I've got peace I've been in a tight place but I got peace don't know which way to turn but I got peace Number two, he said we're perplexed. Everybody say perplexed, but not in despair. Here it is, here it is, Neely, here it is. It means I have comfort in spite of confusion. Here's, here's what the text means. It means to suffer losses without losing. Church folk don't know when to shout. It's not what you lost. It's what you got left. You can't walk, but you can talk. You lost your job, but you got your joy left. You lost your money, but you got your master left. You lost your boot, but you got your belief left. It's not what I lost. It's what I got left. Everybody look at me three seconds so I can tell you this. When you hold on to what hurts, you don't leave room to what feels good. Preach Dennis Jones. I'm trying, but they won't help me. See, we are perplexed because we don't know why stuff happened. The reason you're confused tonight is because you can't understand why it happened. But you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to know what. You don't have to know why. You don't have to know when if you know who. I need seven folk in here. Your shout is, I know who. I don't know why it happened, but I know God. I don't know what happened, but I know God. And if I know God, I can get through anything I'm going through. Because faith is the conviction that God can get me through what I'm going through. That's what faith is. I can get through it. Because things, listen, because it doesn't make sense to you, doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to God. Okay, here's another shout. You and I don't live on explanations. We live on revelation. See, some of y'all ain't saying nothing because you smart, you got to know everything. But when you're dealing with God, if you knew everything, you qualify to be God. So, so when you don't know his wisdom, you have to trust his will. Somebody hold my mic. Because when you can't trace his hand, you got to trust his heart. He's still good. Okay, watch this. Don't miss this. Life is lived forward but understood backwards. <laughs> you live it as you go, but you understand it when you look back over your life and see what God has done. I need somebody in here who say I may be disappointed like John the Baptist. I may be depressed like Elijah, discouraged like Jeremiah, devastated like Job, but I ain't giving up. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Squeeze somebody's hand and tell them hold on to God's unchanging hand. All right. Tighten your seat belts. Push your tray table up. Bring your seat in upright position. We're going through turbulence now. Number three, he says we're persecuted. Everybody shout persecuted. But I'm not forsaken. Here's what the lesson teaches. I can smile 
even though I've been slandered. And if you ain't never been talked about, boo-boo, you excuse for point number three. You catch back up with us on point number four. But this is for folk like me who've been talked about, who've been stabbed in the back. Because y'all, one of the most painful uh, problems in my pilgrimage is to deal with people problems. Can I say to you, betrayal never comes from an enemy. Y'all don't be slow tonight. Betrayal comes from somebody you thought were down with you like four flat tires. And one of the places that you can get hurt the most is with church folk. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't like y'all coming up telling me I met your friend. You don't know who my friends are because my friend list is very short. I got more frenemies than I have friends. Y'all not feeling me. I've lived long enough that know that life is like an elevator. On your way up, you got to let some people off. Y'all not feeling me tonight. See, you can be alone and not be lonely. You can be around a whole lot of people and still be lonely. But I want to encourage somebody to which and tell you, it is not who is against you that matters, who is, who is for you that matters. And don't let the voice of the persecutor be louder than the voice of God. Don't let the voice of the attacker be louder than the voice of God. Don't let the voice of the backbiter be louder than the voice of God. Don't let the voice of the gossiper be louder than the voice of God. Let God have the last word. Talk about me all you want to. When it's all over, God's going to say, servant of God, well done. Now here is another shout. The enemy knows you by your name, but he calls you by your sin. God knows your sin. But he calls you by your name. He knows everything there is to know about me. But he calls me about my name. And whenever you're on your way up, folk will slander you. So let me help you tonight. Don't worry about folk who talk behind your back. They are behind you for a reason. People try to expose what is wrong with you because they can't handle what is right with you. And gossip is the taxes you got to pay for being popular. Have I got a witness? You church folk got it bad. Want to tell us what somebody said about us. Don't tell me what they said. Tell me why they felt comfortable in telling you to come tell me. And what you do, go and get them and bring them back and let them tell me for themselves. Because a dog that brings a bone will carry a bone. And nine times out of ten, they didn't say it. The one that brought it to you is the one who said it. Okay. Let me say this slowly because you're going to need to write this down. Some relationships are a covenant. They are in your life for good. So if they are a covenant relationship, they need to be cultivated. Preach, black man. And then there are some relationships you just need to be cordial with. Big mama say feed them with a long hand and a spoon. And then some just need to be cut off. But here's the problem. Y'all don't know the difference. Y'all try to make the mistake of giving transitional people a permanent status in your life. Y'all not feeling me tonight. And God sometimes remove a person from your life for your protection. 
See, watch this. Every now and then, you're going to have to have rejection so you can have redirection. He moved them out of your life because you were going the wrong way with them in your life. But if nobody else is with me, he walks with me. If nobody else is with me, he talks with me. Ah, it ain't many of us, but is there ten folk in here who know can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can you put somebody, don't push them hard, and tell them Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Number one, I'm peace. I have peace in the spite of pressure, comfort, in spite of confusion. I can smile in spite of slander. One more and we out, y'all. I'm standing in spite of my suffering. He says, I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Paul told me to tell the folk who decided to come to church on a cloudy night that you've got to have a bounce back spirit after your burdens. You got to learn how to bounce back because you will be knocked down. Well, but you got to learn how to bounce back. The enemy wants you to retreat, but you got to return. The enemy wants to set you back, but tell somebody, I decided to show up. The enemy wants you to backslide, but you got to bounce back. He want to knock you down, but you got to keep getting up. Watch this. Watch this. You put Paul in jail, guess what happened? A jailer gets saved. You take him before a king, guess what he does? Turns a palace into a pulpit. You put him in solitary confinement, he writes half of the New Testament. He turns every disappointment into a door, every interruption into an opportunity, every frustration into a stimulation. I'm leaving y'all when I tell you, boo-boo, you need a bounce back in your spirit. Can I talk to you? Can you look at somebody like they are your enemy? They ain't your enemy. But look at them and tell them, come on, I want you to practice. Tell them if my setback amuses you my comeback gonna confuse you if you were happy when I got knocked down you ain't gonna figure out when I jump back up see all of our lives is a diary rewrite one situation but life will force us to write another one I didn't mean to feel like this tonight. You see, one scene doesn't make your whole story. Everybody look at me. Never judge a man's story by the chapter you walked in on. I may be broke, but that ain't my whole story. I may have gotten laid off, but that ain't my whole story. My child may be acting crazy, but that ain't my whole story. Okay, watch this. True story. True story. Knoxville newspaper did two articles about same situations, two different reactions. True story. Boy dumped by his girlfriend, jumps from a bridge. Another one dumped by his girlfriend, wrote a hit song, does wrote a song, it becomes a hit, he makes thousands of dollars. Here's the revelation, make your pain pay. Don't jump, write a song about it. Turn your test into a testimony and your pain into a praise. See y'all, it's one thing to be knocked down. It's another thing to be knocked out. True story. True story, don't you miss it. You miss it, you slow. True story. 1852, true story. The California vineyard owners were going into bankrupt because of a drought. Uh -huh. Their grapes shriveled on a vine. Uh -huh. You got it? Yes. So one guy picks shriveled grapes 
took them to a market and said they were a Perusian delicacy. And guess what? We've been eating raisins ever since. Come on, push somebody. Tell them, make your pain pay for you. See? See, some of you have been knocked down emotionally. Some of you have been knocked down relationally. Some of you have been knocked down financially. And some of you have been knocked down physically. But here is the shout. If you fall, you're going to get scars. But scars are a sign you survived something. If I pulled up my left pan leg, you'd see a scar this long. Don't worry about what the scar looks like, but the sign is I survived something. Y'all not feeling me. When Jesus got up out of the grave, you know one of the first things he did to the disciples? He showed up his scars because his scars meant he died on a cross. He got up. Have I got a witness? With all power in his hand. And if you got a scar tonight, you got to come to church. When you have a scar, you got to stand up. And not only should you stand up, but you got to learn how to show up. And not only should you show up, but if you've got a scar, you got to learn how to say something. Is there anybody here got a scar tonight to let somebody know you've been through something? Can you hold somebody's hand? Come on, hold their hand and tell them, neighbor, I've had some mountains I've had some valleys but I'm here tonight because through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus through it all I've learned to depend on this word is there anybody here you go hold on or you go hold on Turn to one more person. Turn to one more person. Hold a hand. Tell them I've been lied on, but I ain't giving up. I've been talked about, but I ain't giving up. I've been knocked down, but I ain't giving up. Tell them I refuse to quit because Jesus did not quit. They hung him high, stretched him wide, dropped him low, but he died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, yes, he got up. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody shout, yeah. 